Right, so the next step is to read in those Bifrost particles. So if we just start typing read, we can go down to read Bifrost object. Now we're going to need the same time as we did on the right Bifrost. So I'm literally just going to take this long into the frame here. And then we'll just go and look for those cached files. So I'm looking for anything that says new, but I want the new main emission first. So click on the first one there, open that. Now it's important just to note that we're just bringing in the one frame here. So I'm just going to put in four hashes, hit enter. And if I plug that in, we should get our cache sharp in our scene. Lovely, and we can scrub through. Not extremely fast, but let's remember just how many particles we've got coming in here. So that's all good. I'm just gonna undo this one. Get that out of the way. And then I'm simply gonna control C, control V. I'm gonna bring in the next set, which I think I'll add that side cream first. So we've got new main emission, new sides. And then the main emission, let's get the first frame. There we go. And I'll make sure this has got a series of hashes as well. One, two, three, four. Hit enter. Plug that bad boy in. I'll reorder and tidy up everything in a minute. And let's see if that comes in. Lovely. And is that moving? Awesome. That's great. Note that the colour's coming in as well. So let's control C, control V. And we get the final one in which is going to be that chocolate sauce that drips over the top at the end. So, new chalk sauce emission. Ba -ba -da. There we go, bring that in once again. We'll just go one, two, three, four. Hit enter. Plug that bad boy in. And probably going to have to scroll a little bit further for the emission just to see that coming in. Beautiful. Right, so that's good. All, all of our sequences, all of our simulation is cached. We can see we've got a cache sitting in there and we can scrub through. We don't need any simulation anymore. So this is great. So now we want to go on to meshing these and getting some shaders on. I'm just going to have a little scene tidy up as well. First thing we want to do is we want to do a points to level set. Points to level set. That just gives us a bit more performance over uh, points to volume. So points to level set. And between level set and any kind of meshing that we're going to do, I'm going to put down a smooth voxel property. That's just going to help us smooth out some of the details by using a, a Gaussian attribute that's that's part of this node and in here we're just going to type in voxel signed distance that's the property we need to smooth out and then I'm going to do a volume to mesh okay I've got a standard surface material down here that I brought in just now um, let's just do Sign material. Let's get rid of that actually. Let's start that again. And just plug this into uh, geometry, and I'm going to put in a standard surface material. Color wise, let's just pick something chocolatey that we're happy with. Just go with something coffee ish at the moment. Right. So I'm going to output this mesh that's coming straight from the Bob files. We can see that it looks a real mess at the moment. And that's because we've got no real resolution in there. So what I personally like to do is to connect the points themselves directly from the cache. Because then this gives me a good indication of where I want my mesh to be. So the, those points pop in and we can see that our mesh is nowhere near uh, where our points need to be. So detail size is where we're going to be able to kind of sort of start pulling that mesh out. So D 
detail size I'm going to start with 0.01 and just see where that pops out to we can start to see the mesh popping out to there but again like it's, it's not where I want it to be so I'm going to take it down to about 0.08 watch that pop out and obviously you know for every increment down and more resolution you're going to take a little hit on the on the playback of this I'm going to go 0.07 I think see if we can't just pull that out a bit more yeah and it's going to be it's, it's going to be like an, a playoff between you know seeing all of these points and the kind of bumps and stuff like that to you know the general shape and I think the general shape is pretty much there I might just go down another point but then again I could pull that in using the volume to mesh so let's look at that I think if I just up that level set threshold a little bit 0.03 perhaps that's going to push that mesh out a little bit which is going to help kind of cover those points a bit more that's looking good I'll just have a look at the mesh itself we just stick on wireframe when shaded we can have a look a bit better see for, that mesh isn't particularly dense in the great scheme of things so I'm just going to help just some, some of these details along a little bit by pulling down the detail size scale not by a lot I'll go to like 0.8 enter that's just going to give us a bit more detail right so probably what I'll do now is disconnect these points just take that wireframe shading off and then I'm just going to dial in this smooth voxel property a little bit I'm just going to put two in the filter width and that's going to kind of spread that Gaussian blur out a little bit more and then I'm going to put two in the deviation let's just have a little look at how that looks yeah let's just kind of smoothed it out a bit and we're going to kind of be rendering from back here I think that's nice it's, it's, a, it's a trade off between too much detail and not enough detail too much detail is going to, obviously going to give us the you know we're going to start seeing points which we don't want to do but I'm happy with that I'm happy with that it just gives me enough detail that I'm kind of happy that it's kind of creamy kind of clumpy in areas that's all good right so what's probably best to do now is if I just kind of pause the graph and then I'm going to copy and paste all of this stuff apart from the shader to the next section and we're going to plug in the next section which is going to be our cream that kind of goes alongside the uh, the main cream and I'll just disconnect that and we'll just bring in a new one standard surface material and then color wise I'm just going to pick something maybe pinkish let's just grab the color there maybe pinkish white we can mess with that later on really and then I'm going to unpause the graph and we'll just take a little look again doing the same thing just bringing those points in and just having a little look at what we got so right now we're just waiting for everything to load in as it stands right off the bat you know that kind of that cream there looks okay but I'll just pull in the points just to make sure I've got what I want and we'll just zoom in and have a little look because we kind of want this cream to be tight up against the rest of it yeah and I can see I can see the points there but I can see that mesh is perfect it's just perfectly on top of where I want it to be maybe the res is a bit high for this we could just knock it up a little bit 0.9 let's just watch that change slightly okay and then I'm just going to do the same with the chocolate so let's pause let's get rid of those points and then let's select all of these control C control V up here we'll tidy all this up in a bit and we'll just drag in this new cache kill this and I'm just going to put down a new standard surface material 
and this we want this to be this kind of dark chocolate color so I'm just going to select something dark and chocolatey cool that'll do and I'm going to sort of forward to near to the end of the simulation so we load in a decent part of where that chocolate falls and let's just unpause the graph what well, I should have done was plugged in the cache for that but you know I'll do it in a second right well for some reason we haven't got the chocolate colour unless I just didn't do it right but let's try that let's see if I can get that colour to turn up how I want it there we go right so now I'm just going to pull in that cache into the output just have a look at those points for this chocolate but it's looking really good just just by looking at it to be honest but we'll have a little look so there's certain points that I don't want so this is kind of working you know I don't really want to be picking up these down here and these here again there's not much detail there so I wouldn't really want the mesh there so yeah this is looking pretty good actually just as it stands well, what do you know okay so let's just get rid of that and I'm just going to pull back and we're going to do a play blast which may take a little while just because we're loading in quite a lot of polys at the moment but yeah I'm loving the look of this looks really cool we'll just do a play blast just going to save this let's go window play blast okay this is looking great I'm really happy with this there's just one bit I'm not so happy with it's just when the chocolate pours at the end here right about there there's some te kind of like tearing going on now I imagine that's just where we just we just haven't got enough, either enough detail in, in the mesh or we could pull it back a bit to sort of not worry so much about those particles that are going on there yeah let's just have a little look Let's see what's what, what's occurring up here. So I'm just going to plug in those particles and we'll just get a better understanding of what's happening. So I just pull those particles out from that cache. They'll load in. Alright, yeah, so it says I thought there's just not enough particle information there for me to sort of worry so much about this area. I think what I might do is just push the mesh back a little bit maybe try and pull away from some of that detail so we'll just give it another smooth but that's going to be like an overall smooth so let's just see if the level set threshold just kind of pushing that out a bit more will help us in this instance so I'll just go to 0 0.004 it might just bring the chocolate up over this area and just help us when that mesh starts to go a bit crazy all right, that looks okay so if we just pull the animation back to when that mesh starts to go a bit crazy and we can have a little look see what's happening just come back a bit further it may be that we've fixed it with that little push out that does look better just come back a bit more just to double check because I don't mind this area splitting apart, that's kind of what would happen with liquid as it just gets thinner and thinner. But yeah, I think I think we've fixed that just by doing that. Also, you know, things to keep in mind are you know the kind of angles that we're going to be rendering at and stuff like that. So sometimes you just kind of have to choose your battles wisely as to what you want to start chasing. But that looks cool. So I think it's time to get onto some lighting and look dev. Another thing we need to do actually is to just select the Bifrost graph itself because if we want to get motion blur happening in Arnold we just need to select this and then go to the Arnold tab and in motion blur mode we'll just set this to velocity only so that when all of this drips we're going to get the motion blur working through Arnold. So I started off with like a little scene clean up and just to kind of get things in order I kind of wanted to get those uh, standard surface nodes just in my line of view as well as the uh, render view to the side 
And really, this is just, again, again, it's a very personal thing. I just wanted to go through and just get my subsurface scattering kind of looking right. Things like cream, um, like thick cream like this, you could, you could really go over the top with subsurface and there's no need. You just kind of want to make it look more natural. So you just want to, just like a tiny smidge of subsurface, but it really does depend on the scale of your scene and whatnot. I did some extra lights. Lighting's kind of one of the things I really enjoy. So I was bringing a light in on the right hand side. I do have a dome light with a HDRI attached to it. But also one of the important things about lighting sometimes is just to get a little rim light going. So I just had a little light on the back. That just really helped. Again, as I said, all of this is personal preference. But, you know, I just went on to create uh, three different cameras. I just sort of placed them around the scene. I was a bit lazy, I didn't bother rendering out the uh, depth maps and stuff like that. I just did kind of in-camera depth blur, which is another thing that makes other renders look amazing. But as I said before, that because we're dealing with cash, you should be able to use this in your preferred renderer. But obviously, we love a bit of Arnold this end. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it.